بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم ما بعد time is a treasure and as time goes by it unfolds how deep one is in deception and darker so either time will unveil and unfold and if not in this world then definitely in the year after some pious people were asked كيف ترى الدهر what's your opinion of time what's your suggestion give us your synopsis of time قال يخلق الابدان time consumes bodies it wears out and disintegrates this human being so no matter how much anti-aging cream and how much effort is made on the external body eventually time will take its toll before death if a person lives to an extended life you will see the toll time takes on its body and after death as well but the people and the friends of allah their bodies don't decompose and time does not take a toll on their body as well as their room what you jaddidul amal and time renews hope because every day a person wakes up with new hope with new ambitions with new aspirations and we want to do it better one room two rooms single story double story one series two series it goes on and on and on wa yujaddidul amal wa yuqarribul maniyya and time brings death closer every second that we are breathing we are bringing death closer to us wa yub'idul umniyya and time lengthens and distances our longings and desires you just thought so you made it you just thought so you want to make your million you thought thought so this was the deal the last deal of your life and you were set you just thought so you were set and overnight everything ended so they asked him fama halu ahlihi if this is your opinion of time what is your opinion about the people قال من ظفر به تعبا whoever strives for this dunya and tries to conquer it even if he does conquer it he'll exhaust himself ومن فاته نضبا and whoever exhausts himself in this dunya and doesn't achieve it then definitely he will be completely annihilated so time and the people of time he poets says idha adbarat kanat ala al mar'i hasra wa in aqbalat kana kathiran humumuha the this dunya is such when you lose it you cry when you get it you cry when you don't have it you have problems when you have it you still have problems the poor person can sleep peacefully because nobody is going to rob him and somebody comes to rob him also the, the thief leaves something for him the person who's got the wealth now he has he has to spend money to look after his wealth he has to spend money on tax experts and specialists to show him how to protect his money he has to spend his money on experts and consultants to show him which financial instrument whether you should set up a trust for an offshore company offshore account how do you manipulate the system so that's the dunya some wise people used to say kanat ad dunya wa lan akun fiha dunya was before i was never there i never missed out in anything wa tadhhabu ad dunya wa la akun fiha one day the dunya will go and i won't be there fala askun ilayha 
I'm not going to stay here forever. I never had it. I'll never have it. Why should I make this my abode? Because living on earth is filled with misfortune and adversities and calamities. So we see that when a child grows up, the mother, the parents do so much for the child, but when they come at that certain age, then they rebel. Sometimes that mother, who had given so much for the child, wishes he wasn't alive. Imagine if this is the torment that a child can give their parents, and the parents can say that, how many times did Allah give us a chance and he's still waiting for us to turn to him, to make Toba and to repent. So we need to get it right and we only have one opportunity, one chance. When a person goes hunting, then he needs to get his hunting rifle correct. And part of that is his sights. So on the telescope, he has to adjust the range, 100 meters, 200 meters, 400 meters, at what range? Where's the target? And you need to be still. So the first rule is you need to be still without any movement. Because one millimeter, one centimeter of movement will go off the target. This is in dunya and only 400 meters. What about the target of akhirat and such a long journey? How much focus, how much time, how much energy... How much resources are we utilizing to make sure we get it right in Akhirah? Maybe simple, read Quran. Am I reading Quran with Tajweed? Make Salah. We read in Salah. Am I reading Salah with Khushu? So, Deen is complete. Morning and evening, Adiya. These are Duas, Adiya, simple. But, am I practicing? When a person has his target in front of him, then things are easy because you've got your focus. person has akhirat. Like now, people are looking, okay, what's an ideal second home? We need to move to Dubai. It's convenient. It's thus. Oh, but this is the issue, the temperature, the schools, the Islamic education, the masajid. Okay, maybe Canada, maybe UK. So some people are looking at the dini perspective. Some people are looking at the dunyawi perspective. Some people are looking at the convenience perspective. Some people are looking at the passport power. Travel-free countries, visa-free countries. Some people are looking at how much it's going to cost me. Whatever the factor, but that person who's applied for that passport and he gets news that he is accepted, it's been granted, how much? He hasn't received it yet. Just the news that you have qualified. How much happiness, how much elation, how much pleasure does he get? Now the passport for the Qabr, the passport for Hashar, passport for Pul Sirat, passport for Mizan, passport for Hisab Kitab, passport for Jannah. So we, we've understood second passport plan B but what about the ultimate plan B? The ultimate plan B. The plan for Jannah. The plan for Allah. The plan for the Sunnah of Janab Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The plan for Akhirah. The plan for my permanent abode. These are just temporary abodes. Temporary securities. What about the securities of the year after? So a person who gets caught in this docker in this deception, it's hard for a person to realize. Because dunya is in the heart. You see, a beggar came to one person on the street and said, I haven't eaten in three days. I haven't eaten in three days. So the person said, that's so sad. We'll have to get somebody to force feed you. Somebody must force feed you. They say initially in the olden days, you see most currencies were always green. Why? Because the Jews picked it before it was ripe. So dunya, am I first in deen or am I first in dunya? That's the golden question. Otherwise the hearts have become hard. And even a major event, a major catastrophe, a major death 
circumstances around a person, but they don't change. You see, there was a religious lady, so she went to a solicitor to prepare her last will and testament. So she told him that she wanted to be cremated. So he said, but it's against your religion. Your family on hearing this news will be devastated. She said, I don't care. I've made my mind up and I have one more request. I want my ashes to be scattered at the entrance of a big clothing store in this shopping mall. So now the solicitor was even more baffled. And he said, why on earth would you want that? Why on earth would you want that? So she replied, it's the only way I can make sure my daughters visit me twice a week. It's the only way I can make sure my daughters visit me twice a week. So, no matter what signs are in front of us, on dunya there's istiqamat and consistency. But on deen, no consistency. Somebody came to Muhammad Khan and said, Molana, how do we get istiqama? So Malana replied, why are you asking me? Go ask a businessman. Go ask a businessman. There's no jamaat to give him targheeb, to take him out in a part of Allah, to say you must go and open up your business. There's no people encouraging, giving bayanat and lectures. You must go to your shop and open up your business, open up your profession. Nobody is doing that. What gives that businessman istiqamat? What? Factors motivate him, those same factors and even more should motivate you for deen. So when a person is wise and searching for solutions for akhirat, they will strive for that. No matter what the problem is, we'll always turn in the right direction. You see there were three men, an Italian, a Frenchman and an Indian and a judgment was passed for their execution. So each one has asked what would he like for his last meal. So the Italian obviously requested for pizza. He was served and executed. The Frenchman requested for pasta. Pasta was served and he was executed. The Indian request, requested for fresh strawberries. Fresh strawberries. So the firing squad head said, we are, we, our hands are tight. It's out of season. We don't get strawberries this time of the year. He said, no problem, I'll wait. No problem, I'll wait. So a person wise in dunya can solve his dunyawi problems. We need to be wise in akhirat to solve the problems of akhirah. Otherwise, everyone is out there to harm others, not to benefit others. It's a alam of nafsi, nafsi in dunya. He said, two Jewish businessmen were discussing uh, and as the discussion, they were mutual acquaintances, so they were reminiscing about what achievements and accomplishments. And the one said, I put so and so on his feet. Means I did something very great. So the other person was surprised. He said, you did? You have a reputation of being hard-hearted, the most hardest-hearted man in town. How did you ever put him on his feet. So he said he couldn't keep up with his payments, so I repossessed his car. I repossessed his car. I put him back on his feet. So sometimes we got it all wrong. We live in a fallacy, in a makeup world. But actually, things are not like that. As a lady, she told her friend, you know my husband, did you hear about him? He's going to a psychiatrist twice a week. So a friend said, is that good? So she exclaimed, definitely. It's very good. And that's not the only part. Besides him paying $35 an hour, he's paying such a high price, but the only thing he talks about is me. The only thing he talks about is me. Wake up and smell the coffee. So Allah has given us 
a chance, an opportunity. Let us see how every moment of our lives are used and utilized in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, if we need to strive for something, then the actual place of striving is in Akhirah, striving for Akhirah in this dunya. You see, there was one person and he was desperate to get married. So every time they went to a girl and he proposed, his mother said, I don't like her. So he went to his friend and confided in him and told him that, you know what, every time I like somebody, my mother says she doesn't like her. So I do not know what to do. So he thought about it and he said, why don't you find somebody that's like your mother? So find all the likes and dislikes of your mother and then search for a girl that fits this criteria. If she fits this criteria, then you know you got the winning formula. So anyway, he searched and he told people and put the word out and eventually he found the girl. So they went to go see the girl that he proposed and he was elated and happy that finally his problems are solved. And he sent a message to his friends. When his friend met him, he said, your problems must be sorted out. You see, I advise you very well. He said, you know what? I did exactly as you said. This girl and my mother could have been mistaken for sisters. They could have been mistaken for sisters. So he said, my mother loved her. But when my father found out about her, he couldn't stand the bride. He didn't accept, my father didn't accept that I'm going to marry somebody like this. So dunya is such, no matter how much and how hard we try to get it right, we will never get it right. Akhirat is the place, now is the time. Every breath is a lost opportunity. Every moment of negligence is a burden for us. Every disobedience will come back later, if not in dunya to haunt, then in the akhirah. So let us utilize all the avenues that Allah has given us so that we die with Allah happy with us, with the kalima on our tongue. The amal for today is إذا دخلت على مريض when you visit a sick person فمره يدعو لك tell him to make dua for you فإن دعاه كدعاء الملائكة because this ill person making dua for you is like the dua of the malaika in another riwayat فإن دعوة المريض مستجابة that the dua of a sick person is accepted so request the ill and the sickly to make dua for you may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen